at freestylelibre.us. We're ready to go. Starting lineups presented by Las Vegas. And a little bit of a change for the Stanford Cardinal. Max Merrill making his first start since mid-December in the starting lineup in place of Jaden Dallaire. Jared Hassett's looking for a change. Yeah, and they're going to be changing coverages here this afternoon that we'll talk more about, not only on ball screen action, but defending the post. Same five for Arizona State during the surge as the Sun Devils again have won four straight, seven of their last eight. With DJ Horn and Jay Heath, the impressive backcourt, and Mario Jackson still coming off the bench. Yeah. And there's Jared Haas on the other end of the floor in a 60 year on the farm. You got to play in a Pac-10 tournament, right? I did. I did. Way back when. I didn't get to play my junior and senior year. Only my freshman and sophomore year. As they did away with the tournament yep. after your first two years. When yep. Jared Haas played his one season in Cal, the Pac-10 tournament didn't exist. Uh, he didn't get to play in this event. Let's keep an eye out for what I mentioned. Stanford's defensive coverage is how they're going to change him up. Try and give Arizona State different looks. There's DJ Horn. Arizona State's leading scorer this year. But really, Horn's been solid all year. It's really been that Marion Jackson starting to shoot it better. Luther Muhammad starts to make some shots for Arizona State. But more importantly, Jalen Grant, since about early or mid-January, just upped his level. I was glad he got rewarded being second team all-conference. It was just announced yesterday. He has really raised his level as the year's gone on. James Keith inside up the nice find for Michael O'Connell and Stanford on the board first. That's what Stanford wants to do. Make it a half-court game, but let's let's make Arizona State guard for most of the clock. The biggest reason why Arizona State was able to win on Saturday was Stanford 21 turnovers. You're not going to win many games turning it over 21 times, especially in a low possession game like it was. Shot clock inside 10. Jalen Graham, the floater over Keith rattles out. Rebound tipped back to Graham, who leans in, missed it, and Harrison Ingram controls, and Stanford's got the ball. Jalen Graham, one of the few players that likes that little push shot inside 10, 12, 14 feet. Harrison Ingram, the miss. He has struggled here down the stretch. During the Stanford five-game losing streak, he has only averaged five points a game. And an offensive foul against the Sun Devils. Uh, both, team, both teams engaged here early, but you're right. I mentioned in our open about Harrison Ingram. They're just guarding him better. They figured out ways to guard him. I expect today for Stanford to run Harrison Ingram down into that mid-post area and let him go to work. He had some success on Saturday, and has had success all year. I think we're going to see them do a little more of that here against Arizona State this afternoon. Marion Jackson already in the game for the Sun Devils. Took Bobby Hurley 91 seconds to sub him in. He's guarding Harrison Ingram. Marion Jackson with those fast hands. Gets in, passing to miss from deep. Gets in passing lanes, but also just strips guys. He's got strong, fast hands, so if you put that ball in front of him, he's going to take it from you. DJ Horn from the corner, and Arizona State with their first lead. Horn's become more of that. He can bring it up and be on the ball and initiate offense. But now that Marion Jackson's kind of come on, he's more on the ball. So it's allowed Horn to play more off the ball. Horn and Heath, the two best three-point shooters for Arizona State. Michael O'Connell to pull up. And the rebound batted around. Spencer Jones comes inside and claims it for Stanford. The putback for the Cardinal. Well, this is what happened the other day. Stanford got off to a really good start. In particular, Spencer Jones had three threes early in that game. But then Stanford just went cold from behind the line, but also turned it over too many times. They led at the half of that game before Arizona State took it over the second half. But also Stanford, I thought, last Thursday night played well in Tucson before Arizona put yeah. away the last 10 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's really been the turnovers, Roxy. Like, it's hard to win games when you're turning it over that much just because you can't ever get into an offensive rhythm if you're giving it away. And there, there was a lot of unforced errors from Stanford on Saturday. A lot of travels, just throwing it to Arizona State. And a three from the corner from Alonzo Gaffney, who's become more of a threat in recent weeks from the outside. Well, here's the deal, Rox. We've talked about Mari and Jackson and Muhammad and guys up in their game, Graham. But Arizona State's still only a sub-30% three-point shooter. So if they ever get hot, and maybe it starts today, they are really going to be the dark horse to win this tournament. Because if they can start knocking down threes consistently to go along, 
with this lights out defense we've seen the last few weeks they're gonna be tough to beat transition three off the mark for maria jackson and stanford controls here a little over three and a half minutes in this is the pace stanford wants them this is you know we're gonna walk it up we're gonna get into our sets we're gonna make you guard and hopefully we execute without turning it over james keith in the lane O'Connell to the basket as his shot blocked. And a loose ball tracked down by Jay Heath. And the Devils push it. Better get back if you're Stanford. These transition trail threes are lethal. DJ Russell. Horn missed everything. Well, good close by Merle, though. I think Horn saw him coming and rushed it up there, missed everything. We have multiple guys on Ingram so far. Now Gaffney's checking. Travel on Spencer Jones, Stanford with the turnover, and the Cardinal give it away for the first time. 6-4, Arizona State a couple of threes in the early lead. The fans. Those are all the people coming favorite. to the pool party later. The Don McLean pool party. It's hot, maybe they go cold, but this one was impressive because it looked like that the roster makeup just wasn't going to be able to be good enough offensively, and it just somehow, it's one game. And it was that UCLA triple overtime game, Roxy. Ever since that game, they got confidence. They're making more shots. They're better offensively. And obviously winning more games. And that began to stretch when they started winning 7 out of 8. As Marion Jackson driving the lane. His first points of the day. And this is an Arizona State team, Don. They started the conference at 3-9. and nine. Yep. They went, finished at 10-10. and 10. Um, in a microcosm of Arizona State is Marion Jackson. He's getting after a ball here. It, he's just playing with more force now. When you're more confident, you play harder, and you're not thinking about things, and you're just making things happen. And Jackson's been lights out on both ends for, for quite a while now. Brandon Angel drops it off to James Keith, who flips it in with a shot clock rolling down on Stanford. That's where Stanford has the advantage. They're one of the biggest teams, not only in the Pac-12, but in the country. So I expect, I, I mentioned Ingram posting, they're going to try and pound it inside and put some pressure on the interior defense of Arizona State. Got numbers. Step back for DJ Horn. Looks like we have a double foul going for the rebound as James Keefe went down, was tied up with Enoch Buwachi, the freshman for the Sun Devils. I like it. When in doubt, call it on both of them. Buwachi's <laughs> a big boy, and so is Keefe. I wonder if they're going to be looking for a hook and hold here, which would make it a flagrant one. I don't think they're looking. That was a double foul. Called it on both of them. You don't see that very often. So just a double foul. They will not be checking for the hook and hold. As Greg Nixon, Deldre Carr, Darren White are officials for game one with Dave Hall as the standby. Interesting. Now Marion Jackson on Harrison Ingram. You, you, know, you spend a lot of energy checking the other team's best players, so you don't want one of your players on him the whole time. Ingram gets around. Good help by Lawrence there. Pulled down by Enoch Kowachi. Mentioned the change in coverages of Stanford, especially in the ball screen. They can switch one through five. I don't know about with this lineup with Ray No on the court, but I think with Ray No on the court, you'll, you'll probably see him downing, which means the guard jumps the high side, sends the ball handler to the side in the baseline, and make him make decisions from there. Keep the ball out of the middle. 7 1 freshman from France, Maxime Ray No short on the three. Jemiah Neal in the game. Knocked away by Issa Silva, the Stanford freshman, and a takeaway for the Cardinal. And Neil didn't play much on Saturday, and you wonder why, but turn over there. Block shot, Enoch Buwachi, and he pulls it down. Outlet picked off by Issa Silva. Stanford gets it right back. Uh, Arizona State wants to get out. I've said that a couple times, but you can't throw risky passes because you want to get out. It's there, push it. If not, you're going to have to run half-court offense. Nice jump hook. Brandon Angel back down for Stanford. Well, Brandon Angel, it's something about Arizona State he likes playing against. Double figures in both games against Arizona State this year. He had 14 in the game last Saturday in the 65-56 Sun Devil win in Tempe. But only averages seven and a half a game. Well, obviously, there's something about the way Arizona State plays. And it probably has to do with their size that Angel likes. 
Foul whistled on Issa Silva. Threes for Equality is back for year two at this year's Pac-12 basketball tournaments. Pacific Premier Bank will be donating $100 for every made three-pointer to the United Negro College Fund. And the National Urban League throughout both the women's tournament last week and the men's tournament starting today here in Las Vegas. Good find by Muhammad. And the three missing from Jay Heath. Stanford the rebound. He 41% on the season. I said earlier, he and Horn, they're two most dangerous guys from behind the line. He's got a pretty good look there, just couldn't knock it down. Marion Jackson whistled out top for the foul. You know, one thing that Arizona State's done really well here down the home stretch, we keep talking about this 7 and 1, the last eight, is guard without fouling. Like, they have not been putting teams on the free throw line. All eight points early in this one for the Cardinal coming into paint. No surprise there. Shot clock at seven. Issa Silva throws up a wild reverse layup on the baseline. It's run down by Jalen Graham. Here comes ASU. Arian Jackson. Transition three from well behind the line. I'm telling you, at one point, at one point midway through the season, Roxy, Muhammad and Jackson were both sub 20% from three. And now he's pulling in transition and knocking it down. Jackson, nine of the last 11, he's been in double digits, averaging over 16 during the stretch as the lob to Jaden Dallaire, who came off the bench for Jared Hass at Stanford. Today. So that sequence is what I'm talking about. Arizona State stop, get it down, transition three for Jackson, go back the other way. Stanford's going to pound it and score in the paint in the half court. Jalen Graham missing in the lane, and Spencer Jones the rebound for the Cardinals. Well, that's his shot, Graham. I mentioned it earlier, that little push shot in the lane. Unfortunately, he hasn't gotten one to go down yet. Spencer Jones, and a three, and we're tied. Spencer Jones, speaking of good weekends last weekend, even though Stanford didn't win either game, he played well in both those games at Arizona and Arizona State. Tenth in Stanford history in three, Spencer Jones. He was honorable mention all Pac-12 as Luther Muhammad buries the three. Now, this was not happening for most of the year. And now... They're confident in Jackson driving baseline, Muhammad drifting baseline, knocking down that shot. And Muhammad was scoreless the last two games for the Sun Devils, already with five. Charge on Issa Silva, his second foul, as the Cardinal give it right back to ASU. Uh, Arizona State off to a good start from behind the three-point line, up three here. It took an extra dribble, brought two defenders, then he had two options on the kick out. Uh, on the perimeter, but uh, like I said earlier if Arizona State is making threes Rest of this tournament better watch out Because that's been their one thing all year just offensively haven't been able to string it together for long enough It's going to Graham on the block here First points for Jalen Graham and Arizona State has matched their largest lead here in the early going of five For Stanford though a good sign for the Cardinals done Five assists on six baskets and 10 of their 13 coming into paint. I think an even better sign. That's a good point, Roxy, but a better point. You only two turnovers, but now three. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the broadcaster jinx. Yeah, I mean, they had, I'd have to go back and look, but with halfway through the first half the other day, they had to have had eight or nine by now. So better in that department. The difference has been Arizona State behind the three-point line. Stanford only one, Arizona State four. Going to Graham on the block again. Nice dump off to Kamani Lawrence who fumbled it, recovered, and dropped it in. What's different about Stanford this year, for a couple of years they exclusively doubled the post. No matter who was down there, every single time they doubled it. And now they're being a little more judicious and when they go down they're more of an element of surprise, which I like. And I've said this during Stanford games this year, if you know it's coming every time, you can prepare for it. If you don't know when it's coming, it's hard to prepare for it. So, let's see. They haven't done it yet here this afternoon, but I'm sure it's coming at some point. Foul on Jalen Graham and James Keith will go to the line. First on the junior from Phoenix. So Keith will step up to shoot two for the Cardinal, a 58% foul shooter. Well, two times in a row they go to Graham. He gets pushed out on the perimeter, so now it becomes more of a straight line drive. Kamani moving without the ball gets the catch and finish. So let's see if now that they've had 
few times in a row some success are they going to keep going to Graham down there on the block and can he get deeper post position like he made a play out of that one but Keith pushed them all the way out to the three-point line for the catch they like a homemade curtain of distraction behind the basket what Stanford is shooting at here in the first half doesn't bother James Keith in the bowls. The curtain doesn't travel? Well, this is like a semi-curtain. Yes. You couldn't box up the, the real one and get it out here to Vegas? I don't know if they got the room for it to do that. Oh, that's a good point. These more like the Venetian blind version of the curtain <laughs> of distraction. So here comes a double now. Kamani's got to make a decision. Missed the reverse. James Keith flies in for the rebound. Well, there's a couple of ways to get out of a double team. You can go quick pass out opposite. You can back dribble to see to find somewhere to go to, or you can spin baseline and go. So Kamani, the veteran player, didn't make the shot, but because of his presence and poise, spun baseline. Spencer Jones had a clean look. Jake Delaire, the offensive rebound, gathers, falls off. Why oh, he hesitated? And a foul called underneath. It's against Arizona State. Yeah, if he just gone right back up, I'm with yeah. you, Don. It was right there for a lane. Know what he was waiting for. Actually, they called the foul on James Keith and Stanford were going the other way. It looked initially like the foul was going against ASU. Well, that's when Delaire wants back. He should have just went straight up. We probably could have even dunked it. Lucas Kasunas checks in as Keith goes to the bench with two fouls. But the one the one other positive for Stanford is again the complexion of the game looks like a Stanford game It's not it hasn't been fast Arizona State's got a few transition buckets, but this game is by no means Played at the pace Arizona State wants. Kamani Lawrence missed underneath and there's Spencer Jones on the glass for Stanford. Three guys around him But the thing is for the Cardinals on Harrison Ingram has to get a goal. Well, and I've said this the last couple Stanford games I've done and, and you know you want more from him because you know he's capable of more and I said this on Saturday It's like oh, why are you getting on him for not doing more? Because you don't ask for more for guys that can't do it as Spencer Jones knocks down the three So like if you have the ability that Ingram has you want more because you know he's capable of it We're not asking for more for a lot of guys on this court, but Ingram you are Second three for Spencer Jones. He leads Stanford with eight and the Cardinal close to it in two and now it's a four-point game as a tough fadeaway in the baseline from DJ Horn Horn got the switch smart part Pulled it out got Kasunas iso knocked down the mid-range The other tough thing for Stanford during this losing streak is just the offense hasn't been there as a team they're averaging well, under 55 points a game during the five game slot. Well, when you're turning it over 20 times, it's hard to score a lot of points. Harrison Ingram was looking around for a foul and looked like he may have had a little bit of a gripe there. Kamani Lawrence has it stripped out of bounds. Other way, Stamper ball now, Bobby Hurley. Going a little sideways on the floor over there. for an NCAA tournament bid at large bid have five quad one win and Stanford does have some impressive wins they do they, they won both matchups with USC this year they beat Oregon at home and a last second three by J.D. Delaire mm -hmm. they beat Wyoming on a neutral floor Wyoming's had a good season in the Mountain West probably looking at an at, at large Wyoming also a sneaky win for them is Lucas Kasunas off the dump off inside and the senior from Lithuania Oh. Well, Stanford with it too. The game plan is obvious for Stanford is we are going inside if we if we can limit our turnovers and get looks We are going inside make Arizona State defend us in the paint Off for DJ Horn Harrison Ingram the rebound That's what you love about Ingram. He can rebound it bring in transition off initiate the offense Step back three Spencer Jones comes up empty and ASU controls Location Heath. Quarter three from G. Heath. A 41% three point shooter. Really good offense there. Took their time. Horn got it. Relocation by Heath. Gets his feet down. Good offense. Transfer from Boston College. A 41% three point shooter. Fifth in the conference. Mohammed down there fighting Brandon Angel. Harrison Ingram. Now double. Good double. 
And a jump ball to tie up at the long to the Sun Devils. See, when there's when there's the element of surprise on the double, usually good things happen. Watch this, and then dribble drive back to him. Keith back to the corner. He's patient, not rushing anything. Let it develop. He gets to the corner and knocks it down. Get back to that double, Jalen Graham. You know, he, if you disguise it and come backside like he did, Ingram never saw it coming. That's why they got the turnover. Arizona State 5 for 11 from outside the yard. That's not a good sign for Stanford. No. Jalen Graham rattles out, and the rebound falls to Ingram. He's missed Stanford. He's missed three today that he normally makes every time. Spencer Jones mm. rattles in the three, his third three, and Jones with 11. Quick catch and shoot. You see how fast he turned his body, got his feet down, and got it away? He had three threes in the first half on Saturday, too. See if he can keep it going all the way through today. Shot clock winding down on the Sun Devils. And a steal for Harrison Ingram. Well, that was all set up by Ingram's interior post defense on Graham. Didn't allow him to get it. So Heath had to go late clock and turned it over. Lob for Maxime Reynaud. Swarm and smothered by the Sun Devils saw, collapsing. Saw that coming. Saw those guys stunned down there. They came all the way and took it from him. Setting his feet, Marion Jackson, second three. You got to find him now. It came, it's gone from we're not closing out at all on Jackson to you better find him in transition and in the half court. Last year, Jackson, who was the Mac player of the year, averaged 18 a game at Toledo. He scored over 2,100 career points as Michael O'Connell with his first points of the game for Stanford. But Mario Jackson's played a ton of basketball. 158th career game today. That's unbelievable, these guys now with the COVID year and the grad transfer year and all that. Man, these guys are playing a ton of games. Off balance, Jay Heath throws up a shot that only hit the backboard. Well, Chavez Goodwin for USC has played the second most games now in the history of college basketball. And Spencer Jones may be the best look he's going to have all day. I was just going to say he's knocking down the tougher ones and missing the ones where he's wide open. Jemiah Neal rims out of three. And Brandon Angel tracks it down. And speaking of USC, how about congratulations to Andy Enfield, the news from USC today announcing a contract extension for last year's Pac-12 Coach of the Year. Absolutely. Are they shooting it better from outside? They feel like they're a very well-conditioned team. They only have three fast break points. And then finally against the Stanford zone. He's looking for some crisper execution on that end. Stanford obviously changing from man-to-man -to, -man to zone. Started to slow down Arizona State a little bit. Uh, that's the blueprint for Arizona State. Get stops and get out and score before it gets set as Ingram knocks down the mid-ranger. But again, I go back to what I said a, a few times that the complexion of the game favors Stanford right now It's not a fast game at all. So Arizona State's got to force the issue and We'll see if they can do it to start the second half of, of getting this game sped up First points of the game for Harrison Ingram by the way the Pac-12 freshman of the year is Marion Jackson Seven threes for the Sun Devils Unreal. The, the flip of Marion Jackson and how he struggled so much earlier in the year and how much confidence he's playing with now. Team Delaire moving in. Pump fake, the deep two, short for Brandon Angel. And there's Jemiah Neal clearing for ASU. Here's an opportunity, and, guy, and Arizona State has multiple guys that can bring it. It's not like they gotta hand it off to a point guard or a guard. Everybody, with the exception of probably Gaffney, could get a rebound and bring it in transition. So if you're committed to running, it can't be once in a while. It's like every time we get a stop, we're out and pushing it. And Arizona State here in the first half, Don, they've shot 15 threes. They've shot 13 twos. Which 
I think they were turning down a lot of threes at the beginning and midway through the season because they just weren't going in. I mean, why are we shooting if they're not going in? So now, because of the confidence level rising, they're able to, or they're, they're not turning them down, and they have more attempts. Harrison Ingram, fifth Stanford turnover, a minute 17 left in the see, half. See that play right there. I'd like to see Ingram keep it for another bounce and then make the decision. He's turning the corner, already committed to kicking it to the corner. Make the defense adjust with that extra dribble. Make them come. If they don't, then you pull it. And if they do, then you kick it out to the corner. And a travel on Arizona State out top. I don't know what it is about these Arizona State Stanford games, but they're like, you don't see a travel all year. <laughs> and like Saturday, there's literally like 10 of them. They're continuing here today. Arizona State is led by as many as seven. Keep in mind, they trailed Stanford at the half last Saturday at Desert Financial Arena before they took it over. As the Sun Devils outscored the Cardinal 35-24 after the break last week. Again, I still point to the only four turnovers for Stanford, though, which is withstanding. What if they were turning it over like Saturday, Roxy, and Arizona State was shooting all these three? It would be a 20-point game right now. Lonzo Gaffney blocks the three of Jade Dallaire. Shot and game clock essentially the same. And the 30, the use it or lose it timeout for Bobby Hurley, who's got 16 of his 31 points. For the bench, it's a little deceiving yeah. because Martin Jackson, Jackson comes off the bench. He came, out, he came off the bench a minute into the game. It's in the building, and I'm not not trying to get on him. Then something's wrong. <laughs> so that, then I would actually be mad at Matt if I wasn't trying to make fun of Matt. I'd actually be mad at Matt. So you're not making fun of Casey. So you're, you're mad at him. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Casey's fine. It's just mad. <laughs> See where they go here. Man to man for Stanford, but zoned up on the weak side. Good play by Sam Peskin. Yeah. The Pac-12 Scholar Athlete of the Year gets the turnover. That was just announced today. They call travel. And they call the travel on Beskin, who's a walk-on, the junior from Tucson. So 5.4 left in the half. So does he get credit for steal? And do they also get the turnover? Then? Yes. Yeah. So a steal, but then he gives it right. So this changes, I'm sure, the play design of Arizona State right now. Five point four side out of bounds. I'm surprised just a one four flat here, and that Stanford had one to give or two to give. Yeah, they got a, another one if they want. It fouls on Sam Baskin. I'm sure they'll use it. Why not? Get the Pac clock down even lower. Men's basketball scholar athlete of the year. Oscar De Silva also won it recently for Stanford. It's Jalen Graham missed it way short. And we go to locker rooms on a four-point game at the half of the 8-9 game with ASU. Seven first half threes. Right there at tight one with Stanford. I feel like the game was played the way Stanford wanted to play it, unfortunately for them. Eight from two. Uh, I think Stanford will continue to try and pound it inside to their bigs, but I don't think Stanford wins this game without Ingram putting his his foot, his imprint on this game. Only two points, one of five in the first half for him. Spencer Jones going inside, missed the jump hook, and the rebound controlled by Alonzo Gaffney for Arizona State. Well, Spencer Jones, 11 points in that first half. They can turn him into that mid post, too. He's got some game down there. The problem is Gaffney's got a lot of length. That's who's guarding him. During this recent surge, though, Don, Arizona State has been fabulous in the second half of games. And a good starting point from Jay Heath, his second three, as the Sun Devils have matched their largest lead. Second three for Heath. We didn't even really talk about him much in the first half, but a good sign for Arizona State because he's their best three-point shooter. Michael O'Connell, a clean look, rattles out. And Jalen Graham, the rebound. But in the second half, during this eight-game sprint by Arizona State toward the Pac-12 tournament, as Sam Beskin starting the second half called for the reach in. But Arizona State shot 40% from three in the second half of the game. I'm telling you, their offense just caught up with their defense at the end of the season. They got more confident, and you have to go back to that UCLA win. Triple overtime win at home against a, a, a 
nationally ranked UCLA team. It can't be a coincidence that they, that they went on a run after winning that game. Jalen Graham. Yeah, he makes that shot all the time. Missed three of them in the first half. Got that one to go down. It's not a layup. It's not really a jump hook. It's not a jumper. It's like a in-between shot. And he's gotten good at it. Five straight for ASU to begin the second half as they've opened up a nine-point lead. This is kind of what happened last Saturday. Stanford was right there, had the lead at halftime, and they just couldn't make anything, and Arizona State was converting on the other end. Harrison Ingram with the first points yeah. of the second half for Stanford. Good sign for him. They need him. He's not their leading scorer anymore, but was for most of the season. Certainly capable of having big nights. Spencer Jones averaging 11. Ingram now at 10 and a half. Also, Jaden Dallaire averaging 10 and a half. So three guys right there hovering. For the Cardinals, DJ Horn. His second three. Roxy, I'm telling you, this Arizona State team is going to be a tough out if they continue to shoot it from behind the line like this. Nine for 17. And I like that. Said Harrison See, I like that from Ingram. Go quick. Don't wait for the double to come. Unless you know you want to pass it. If you want to pass it, you wait for the double and then you find the open guy. But if you want to score, you got to go quick. I like this. Drive hard middle, spin back into the defender, and get the foul. Don't wait. Second on Jalen Graham. Stanford, that's another area of the struggle. We keep talking about the turnovers, Don. Stanford's only a 65% free throw shooting team this year. Yeah, what's interesting is last year was a good year in the league for free throw shooting, kind of across the board. Now there's a few teams that didn't shoot it well, but this year has not been a great year. Utah was the best free throw shooting team in the league, but we had a lot more teams than normal in the 60, in the 60s percentage-wise versus the 70s like we saw last year. So a zone from Stanford. Mm -hmm. See, Graham's dangerous right here because he likes that little shot I've been talking about. Talked about a lot about him against the Washington zone where they give you that free throw line area. Graham, one of the few guys that consistently make that inside the foul line shot. Play by Kamani Lawrence, but then Graham misses and then fouls, and that's three on Jalen Graham with 17-11 to go. But the hustle from Lawrence nearly got ASU two points out of that. Unfortunate because Graham hit his first couple shots looked like he was going to get it going here and Now he's got to sit It'll be interesting to see how long Bobby Hurley keeps him on the bench I think a lot will have to do with the scoreboard Stanford starts to make a run. I'll probably put him back in earlier than he wants to Jones got the mismatch with Horn they couldn't get it to him and James Keith is grabbed and it's on Alonzo Gaffney of Arizona State. Well, there wasn't a lot of fouls in that first half. Neither team getting to the bonus. But already three fouls on Arizona State. We mentioned that in the first half, too, how good Arizona State's been defensively without foul. Here's Harrison Ingram. Max Merle open. And a foul will stay at this end. It's on Gaffney for grabbing James Keefe. That's two quick fouls now on Alonzo Gaffney. Well, that time Ingram didn't even wait for the double. The double didn't come, but he went opposite to Merle. Pretty good look at it. Just could knock it down. That's Adam. Saw him last night. Don't worry, Don. Andrew Blahop's not with him. No, but Keefe, he tried to box me out. I'm just walking down the hallway of the hotel. He came in and checked me off the glass. Old habits die hard. Good dude, Adam Keith. It was probably ingrained from those Mike Montgomery scatter reports back in the day. <laughs> exactly. He knocked Bolacci the rebound, the freshman from Ontario, Canada. Bolacci's going to get a get a chance here. Big rip of minutes. Graham and Gaffney both on the bench. DJ Horn. Another three, ten threes for the Sun Devils. I like that. Marty Jackson. Hard drive under control, drop off to Boachi. Instead of him forcing it through the big Stanford defenders, kick out to Horn for the three. Great ball movement. And now a steal for DJ Horn. And Spencer Jones hustling, knocks it away. Arizona State ball in the baseline, but then Horn getting out of the perimeter. 
Good start to the second half for Arizona State. They've opened up their largest lead. It's amazing what shooting can do for your team, Roxy. You get more confident by the game, you feel like, because it's not just Horn and Heath. It's now Jackson. It's now Muhammad's made some. And so I'm sure Arizona will be ready tomorrow. But Arizona State, if they can continue this, will certainly go into that game with some confidence. Winner does get the Pac-12 champion Arizona Wildcats tomorrow in our first quarterfinal matchup. As Arizona State has outscored Stanford 11-3 here to start the second half. Four of five overall from the floor. While Stanford just one of five from the field in the second half. On the switch, Angel checking horn now. Marion Jackson. There's James Keith elevating for the card. It's gotten to the point now today where you feel like every time Arizona State rises up for a three, it's going in. You're surprised when yeah, it is. Seriously. Harrison Ingram. Challenged by Enoch Buachi. That's all you got to do, make a miss, right? You don't have to block it if you're Buachi, but you be big and make him miss it. Ingram missed it, got the rebound. See if Jackson takes advantage of the switch here with Keith. Jay Heath, three-pointer number 11 for Arizona State. Did we mention that the tournament record is 15? With Arizona State now at 11, 15 set by Stanford against Arizona State, no less. Spencer Jones mm. nails it for the Cardinal. It's so weird. He makes the hard ones, <laughs> and the ones he's wide open, he doesn't. That one was tightly contested. And knocks it down. Stanford needs some more of those. It's Jones, four of seven outside the arc. Kamani Lawrence backing down Brandon Angel. Gets the roll off the heel of the rim. Lawrence only four points, but Arizona State hasn't necessarily needed it. Uh, he doesn't shoot threes. <laughs> it's a hit factor in the game plan, right? right? Well, if you're if I, everyone else is making threes, why are we going for twos? Right? Three is better than two. Mm -hmm. right? Spencer Jones. And there is Marion Jackson. And a foul going for the rebound on Stanford. One thing we haven't mentioned about Marion Jackson is how good of a rebounder he is for his position and size. Take a look at the Arizona State bench here. <laughs> it's that time of year. Yeah. Look, they, they know that they lose this when their season's done. They want to keep playing, and the way they're playing right now, they don't want to stop. No. Once you find it, it's fun. And they found it, Arizona State, no doubt. Luther Muhammad. Tough step back. The rebound tip to Alonzo Gaffney. And there's a foul on the Cardinal. All the loose balls and deflections are also going to the Sun Devils. You wonder if all these made threes, Roxy, has taken a little bit of Stanford spirit. Here come the Ducks. Ball in. But it's 5-12 matchup. It's sitting at 14 right now. Arizona State up 14. And you feel like it's make or break time right now for Stanford. They got to dig in and get some stops and get back in this thing or not. Corner three and another one. Alonzo Gaffney's second three. It's unreal. It's contagious. As I've said earlier in the year, Roxy, I have no scientific evidence that three-point shooting is contagious, but I swear it is. 12 for 21. You see other guys making them, and you shoot it with confidence. Maxime Renault off the dump off, and that's a goaltend on Alonzo Gaffney. And give the basket to Maxime Reynaud for the Cardinal, the first points for the freshman. Obvious full 10 here. I've always liked that. I, I want my bigs being active, challenging everything. And if you get a goal 10 here and there, so what? That was like Patrick Ewing back in the day at Georgetown, right? It didn't matter. He just block a shot in the first few minutes and goal 10 yeah. just to announce his presence. Yeah, he'd have nine blocks and seven goal 10s. <laughs> But it makes you think as an offensive player, like if you go after it every single time when you're driving in there as an offensive guy, you're thinking, well, is he going to 
Is he going to block this or what? And maybe you don't go in there anymore. Issa Silva missing a three. He not Bawachi the rebound. That's, that's why they call him rim protector now. They're protecting the rim so that the offensive guy doesn't think there's anything there at the rim. Well, you never hit the rim, so. Well, that's true. <laughs> I also didn't drive it in there either. Smartly. Step back from Luther Muhammad, rims off, and Maxime Renault tied up with Enos Kawachi. And it's out of bounds off of the Cardinal. It goes to Arizona State. Everything going to Arizona State right now. Uh, again, shooting opens up so much stuff. Arizona State knocking them down. They they played the 4-5 game. They didn't have to play a 5-12 game. We'll talk about Oregon State and Oregon when we get to that game, but certainly not the season that either of those two teams had envisioned or are accustomed to. And things got challenging for Oregon. They announced yesterday as he not to watch him missing. James keep the rebound when Oregon announced that Will Richardson, because of a non-COVID illness, did not make the trip to Las Vegas. The leading score and part of the reason they got swept in the Washington's last weekend, too. And, and one for Brandon Angel. And an injury, Alonzo Gaffney is down for Arizona State. Yeah, this is what Stanford needs, competing on their defensive backboard, getting it out, and then attacking the paint on the offensive end. Good little surge here for Stanford. See if they can get it under 10 here in the next couple minutes. Good hustle by Gaffney, rather by uh, Angel to get in there. And the offensive rebound is Gaffney appears to be okay. That's he got tangled up with James Keefe. May have taken a finger in the eye going for the loose ball. Is still trying to shake it off. But an and one for Angel. It was funny, the official was holding the free throw because Gaffney was walking around at half court and Darren White, the official, said to Bobby, he's good. And Bobby said, yeah, he's good. <laughs> Three-point play for Angel. Whether he wants to be good or not, he's good, but Jalen Graham coming in for him now. And they will sub him out. So they held Graham to 11.41. Let's see how Graham can affect the game with those three fouls. Still be productive on both ends. That's the trick. It's like you put a guy in, and yeah, he doesn't pick up his fourth, but is he really impacting the game at all? It was 17. Stanford has trimmed it to 12. Inside of Enoch Kawachi. Corner, DJ Horn. Good box out on Spencer Jones for Stanford. That's what I'm saying, Rocks. You just keep competing on your defensive board. Don't give Arizona State any extras. Stepping into a three, and Spencer Jones missed everything. That was too wide open. <laughs> That's the problem. We've established Nobody it. was challenging him. Like, Arizona State should stop closing out on Spencer Jones because he only <laughs> makes them when they're right there. <laughs> Never going to pick up full here a little bit. See how it changes the look of the game. ASU's gone a little cold here recently. They missed their last five shots, one of their last seven. Yeah, what would the score be had they not cooled off right now? So, a better job by Stanford, I feel like, contesting. But more importantly, getting the misses off their own board. In on Stanford, Issa Silva foul number three. But well, we talked about in the first half, neither team great at the foul line. Arizona State 66%, Stanford 65 is we're headed towards the bonus. Let's see if that becomes a factor foul shooting in this one. Spin back. Lawrence to turn around. Jaden Delaire clears for Stanford. Lawrence more than Graham, but but both of them drive it one way, spin back to their left shoulder. And Jaden Delaire caught with nowhere to go. Well, a great contest by Lawrence without fouling. And the crossover. Kamani Lawrence denied. And Stanford counters. Jaden Delaire, pass broken up, taken right back. Uh, Marion Jackson. That's what Marion Jackson does. Gets in passing lanes. They're starting to speed up now. 
And it gets Stanford gets stabilized here. He, Ingram walks it up. Does that favor Arizona State? Well, it becomes a more well, frantic game. I think this. You're down 12 if you're Stanford playing it slow. It's not working because you're down 12. Let's try something different. See if we can't get some momentum. String together a couple stops and a couple makes. Jaden Delaire. <laughs> Been a tough go of it for Delaire today. The senior coming off the bench after starting the majority of the year is Jared Hass trying to shake things up in a lineup change. But that affects guys differently, right? Some guys are, are, are get mad about it and come out and play lights out. Some guys get their feelings hurt by not starting and then don't really have an effect on the game. Eldre Carr, Greg Nixon step in as James Keith. Jalen Graham hustling for the loose ball. Got physical, which you'd expect with what's on the line. There's nothing here other than guys competing hard in the postseason. There's nothing there. Bobby Hurley, the frustration there is he felt that James Keith threw an elbow. And I think that's what he is trying to relay to Greg Nixon. Eldre Carr, Darren White, and they're telling Bobby Hurley to cool it. He's walking a fine line right now. If they call a foul, which they did actually call a foul, not a jump ball, they called a foul on Graham. That's the fourth on Jalen Graham well, with 9 7 Yeah, let's see if we can get another look at that, because anytime a guy's on the ground and you jump on top of him, that's typically a foul. I mean, it is a foul. Now, if you're both going for the ball at the same time, like Keith kind of already had possession and Graham jumped on top of him. But you wonder if there's you've missed the most recent ones. Your defense is going to carry you home in this one, the last 9-17. And they've kept Stanford off balance all afternoon. Only 38 points for Stanford with nine minutes to go. Stanford going with the two point guards, which we haven't seen often this year. O'Connell and Silver roll. together as James Keith down the lane. Uh, great, great call by Jared Hass and great execution by Stanford. Keith comes up, runs through the screen, and rolls right to the front of the rim, gets the easy dunk. Seven straight for Stanford. They've chipped it down to ten. Mismatch. DJ Horn, crossover, step back, and DJ Horn. Has gone over a thousand career points. Uh, Arizona State needed that. You felt like the tide was turning in favor of Stanford, but a big three to push it back to 13. 13 3 for the Sun Devils, four for DJ Horn. Brandon Angel from the corner, and he answers with a three of his own. He loves playing against Arizona State. I said that in the first half. It's weird how that happens, how players just feel more comfortable playing against certain teams. For you, is it all nine? Other yes. teams? Yes. <laughs> Luther Muhammad. Good challenge by Keith. And Harrison Ingram pulls it down, a wow. chance to get to single digits. Jared has telling them to push it now. They want to play faster. They got some momentum here, want to keep it going. And a foul on a three. Angel will shoot three as Kamani Lawrence fouled him. Stanford trying to come back. The door is open for the Cardinals. Here comes, here comes Stanford. The rule is written. The follow through by Graham and by Lawrence on this play, it's a foul. So it has to be called. But I just don't like it because it didn't affect the shot. And if you remember back to that first matchup, that post game is why Bobby Hurley and Jay Heath that altercation. Well, I won't call it an altercation, but. That sequence led to a one-game suspension for Bobby Hurley and Jay Heath. Yep. Send it over to Jordan Kent. Yeah, guys, I was in the Stanford huddle, and the emphasis was on defense, cranking up the intensity on the guards on the dribble handoffs, but making sure they show their hands and not draw unnecessary fouls. On offense, encouraged to play with pace and to step into an open jumper if you have it. Stanford just 6 and 11 this year when they've trailed going into the second half But it looks like they've started to find their rhythm on offense here in the second half Jordan did it seem like they, they were changing the game plan a little bit like we're not walking it up anymore We're gonna anytime we get a stop. We're pushing it down the court 
You certainly felt that in the huddle. The players were encouraging themselves too, just to push it and then to share the ball also. You get a feeling that this offense is playing a lot more looser and free on the other yeah. end, and that's because they're not trying to slow things down at the moment. Well, it's desperation too. They know they're down double di digits. It's getting late. You play with a little sense of urgency, and sometimes you start making more shots, and they created some momentum for themselves. Let's see if they can keep it going. Last sequence there, Stanford got the stop, but then couldn't contain Alonzo Gaffney, who tipped it in. High point lead. Well, it's under 10, bad pass by Angel. And then James Keith grabs Marion Jackson. And Bobby Hurley an asking for a flavor one. These guys, I've said, this has happened like four times this year when I've done games. All these guys watch the NBA, and there's a million take fouls every night, just like this one. It's an intentional foul in the college game. It's You can't do that. They will go to the monitor after the suggestion from Bobby Hurley. Somebody needs to explain to all these college players that you're not in the NBA and that you can't just give a take foul like you can in the league. Because that's technically not a basketball and play. It's not, but in the NBA, it's allowed to stop fast breaks. And to me, I wish the NBA, like they've done this year, in not letting the flops and the jumping into guys and trying to draw fouls, they've gotten rid of that. They need to get rid of the take foul because it's happening, I don't know, most games I do, five, six times a game that happens. And the fans are there to see the, the transition. They don't care about half-court execution. If you're always stopping the fast break with take fouls, I think it's hurting the product on the floor. The ruling on the floor was common foul on Keith, his third. And they're at the monitor to determine if it should be a flagrant one, which would mean two shots for Arizona State and the ball. Yeah, it is. They're going to call it. So a flagrant one, they have upgraded the foul call on James Keefe. So the flagrant one means two free throws for Arizona State <laughs> and the ball. And then Don McLean literally mid-game trying to rewrite the NCAA rule book as we're doing this Pac-12 tournament game. But it's, I know that's why. I haven't asked players that have done it. But I know they sit at home at night and they watch the NBA and they see it happening And so it's just they don't even think when they're out here and they just do it But it's two shots and the ball in that situation. So for Stanford team that had momentum that is a killer And the for first them. free throw attempts of the game for Arizona State The second one rattles in for Jackson who nails both and just like that double-digit lead again for Arizona State Oops. That has happened way too much this year. I, it may be even maybe even more than four or five times I've been doing a game and it's happened. Well, let's see. You know, Jordan told us that in the Stanford huddle they were trying to pick up the pace and play a little faster. Let's see if Arizona State becomes a little more ju judicious here and using some clock and try and grind this game out. Winner of our matchup will play. Pac-12 champion Arizona Wildcats tomorrow at noon as we start day two in the first final. What a pass by Jackson. Rims out for DJ Horn. Harrison Ingram the rebound for Stanford. Speaking of the NBA, that's an NBA play right there. Drive it on one side. Skip pass to the opposite corner. James Keith to finish. Ten for Keith. Well, still plenty of time for Stanford. Nine-point game, but they got to continue on the defensive end. They got to get stops. Fifth double-figure game of the season for Keith. He's been a great story this year. DJ no Horn, a quick response. Close the help for Stanford, no one home. 16 for Horn. You know, Keith got the starting job early in the season, figuring he'd just be a screen setter and a rebounder. He's provided them a lot more production than I think anyone anticipated. Foul on Jake Heath of Arizona State will send Spencer Jones to the line. Just plays so hard, Keith. And the, the guys that play hard like this, some nights you're, the ball's going to find you, some nights it's not. But Keith just plays hard. I, I haven't done, I've done a million Stanford games this year. I've never sat, sat here and said, wow, Keith, Keith doesn't have it tonight. He plays with the same energy level every time out. One more for Spencer Jones, 73% foul shooter. He leads Stanford with 15 in this one. Well, two possessions in a row, row, one for Arizona State, one for Stanford, where there's no help on the backside. Offense lifted. 
Drive it, easy bucket. 30 second timeout for the Cardinal. Nine point game again. You know, we saw games last year where he played well, and you saw that he had a chance to be this type of player, and he's become that player. Full court pressure from the Stanford Cardinal, easily broken by DJ. Well, I, I don't think you're playing the clock yet if you're Arizona State. Like, you're still playing. You're not doing anything risky early, but this isn't dry, you know, get it down single digits on the shot clock every time yet either. I think it's too early for that. Jalen Graham still sitting with the four fouls. DJ Horn, open. Mm. Another three for Arizona State as the Sun Devils have made 14 threes, one off the tournament record. A great unselfish play by Kamani Lawrence. So they had him down there on the block. He could have gone to work. He was singled up, but instead kicked it out to Horn for a wide open three. Brandon Angel missing the reverse. A loose ball, but on the sideline was Alonzo Gaffney. It stays with Stanford. Did Arizona State have, yeah, 20 on the clock. They had 30 up there. They never had possession, Arizona State. Four fifty-five remaining. Arizona State is led by as many as 17. This is the sixth meeting at the Pac-12 tournament between these two teams. All time. Michael O'Connell. James Keith, the offensive rebound. Don't need threes if you're Stanford, but they would certainly help at this point. Brandon Angel rims out the three. Spencer Jones back taps it to Michael O'Connell. Harrison Ingram, who's been quiet. Spencer Jones. Contested. He makes it. Contested. It's going in. It's unbelievable. For Jones. Well, a huge three to get it under 10, but we're getting late now. Stanford can't allow. Arizona State continuing to score. Stanford bench was holding up a Casey Jacobson picture. Another what defensive that play here. Mm. Jay wow. and they have tied the tournament record. Uh, they cooled off a little, but a couple timely threes here late to, to hold off this Stanford rally. Four threes for Jay Heath. Spencer Jones, hand in his face, buries the two. But can't trade baskets, Stanford. You're down 10. At some point, you got to get two, three, four stops in a row. Jalen Graham at the table getting set to return. Marion Jackson, Alonzo Gaffney. DJ Horn, mm. tough shot of the baseline. 21 for Horn. Uh, it was obvious he could do that from day one when he got to Arizona State. He loves that mid-ranger on the baseline. Puts a little more air under the shot, a little more ball flight. Usually makes that shot. Michael O'Connell sets up in the corner. And missing a three, leads to a three-on-one. Marion Jackson, the drop-off. Oh! oh. Come on, Lawrence! And one! We saw with Oregon State last year, you find something and you capture it, and it just, it gives you a jolt initially, but then it just gives you this push, and your confidence continues to grow, and here we are, Arizona State feels like they can't lose now. The 15 threes ties a tournament record established by Stanford back in 2013. It took overtime for Stanford to do that against the Sun Devils in 2013. It's just, and it never in a million years, Roxy, watching Arizona State earlier in the year, would you say they would ever make 15 threes in a game? Ever. I didn't think they'd make 15 in a month. The Seriously. Way the season started. Seriously. Although they did make 15 against Syracuse earlier this year. James Keefe diving for the loose ball and gets a timeout. And with 2.32 to go, Stanford with the ball down 12. Oh, and like, the winner will get Arizona tomorrow. You love the hustle by Keith. We've been talking about his effort all afternoon. But that timeout may be costly that he had to use there. Would have been best if he had found somebody to get tournament record. Game two coming up next. 360th all-time meeting of Oregon and Oregon State. They most played rivalry in college basketball.
Spencer Jones. Clean look. Too missed. open. But the follow, no, won't go for Angel. The tip, Harrison Ingram. And Stanford down 10. Well, now if you're Arizona State, probably take this run out. What a challenge by Keith. And here comes Stanford, a three on two. If you're Arizona State, you got to start managing clock. It's time and score time. James Keith cleans it up. It's down to eight. And Bobby Hurley wants time. Uh, DJ Horn's got to understand time and score there. That Keith was coming. Just dribble it out. 201 left. 30 seconds. That's okay, but you're not going into foul. I don't think you need to foul yet, but you have to. If you're gonna, if you're gonna play the clock out on this possession, it can't end with an Arizona State basket. A couple of guys. If Stanford does decide to play the foul game, Kamani Lawrence is one of them, and Brandon Angel takes it. He disagrees See, with Greg Nixon. That's exactly what I said. He was trying to pressure it without fouling. You can tell by the re reaction of Jared Hass and Angel that they weren't trying to foul. But Lawrence only a 56% free throw shooter. He's 0 for 1 from the line in this one. And Alonzo Gaffney also struggles from the line. He's only 36%. Oh. So those are two guys that Stanford may look to gamble. But your press break has to involve your three guards. Like, Lawrence and Gaffney shouldn't touch it. Like, your three guards should be able to manage the pressure. James keeps the rebound. And, that, and the three guards are very good free throw shooters. All three of them, Horn, Heath, and Jackson. Brandon Angel backs his way in. Harrison Ingram grabs it. Ingram will get to the line and a foul. 1.43 to go and a chance to climb within six if Ingram can make the free throws. Jalen Graham coming back in the game. I thought we'd see that. He's he's come on as a free throw shooter. He started off slow, seven to twenty-three from the foul line, but has come on since. Rolls in for Harrison Ingram. Comes in for Lawrence. But again, I still feel like Arizona State's got to find a way to keep the ball in the guard's hands. Like Graham and Gaffney shouldn't even touch it. Just a second, Graham the rebound, and Keith takes the foul, and Graham will go to the line for Keith. That's foul number four. And Kamani Lawrence clutching his wrist there on the bench for Arizona State. Wonder if it's from that. I didn't see a play that involved his wrist. 54% Graham from the line, and a one and one at Stanford's eighth team foul. And he missed. Keith grabs a rebound. So oh, now, a couple of front ends missed well, now, by the Sun Devils. Now Stanford, I am fouling because just like I was saying, it's contagious making threes. It can be contagious missing free throws, too. Spencer Jones. And a foul. It's on Marion Jackson. And Spencer Jones will get to the line before the shot. But it doesn't matter because Arizona State just committed the 10th team foul. Two shots for Jones. This is going perfectly for Stanford. Stopping the clock, going to the foul line, and cutting the lead. 22 now for Spencer Jones. Keep in mind, Stanford has just the one timeout left. Arizona State, Sun Devils have two, and Jones pulls the Cardinal within five. Nine straight points for Stanford to climb back into it. Two possession game, 128. There you go. I'll just back it out, make him come get you. He's not a guy you want to foul. No, that's what I'm saying. And timeout Arizona State. Spencer Jones thought he had the tie-up, but before the tie-up, timeout Sun Devils. Oh, you knew the double was coming. Look how close Horn was. Though. Game break, Ashley Adamson, Matt Mulebach, and the nervous Casey Jacobson right now probably watching us on the monitor. Right here courtside at T-Mobile Arena. Casey's like... No. 
And Stanford's going to play it straight up. No foul. Again, if they're going to do this and let Arizona State use clock, you have to finish this possession with a stop if you're Stanford. Arian Jackson. The lob. Broken up. Spencer Jones. Stanford controls. A minute to go. Five-point game. Brandon Angel driving. Angel down to three. Uh, when trying to close out a game, the last thing you want to do is be throwing lob passes. And a foul on Sam Beskin. Reaching in on Marion Jackson. And Arizona State will head to the line at the other end. Well, Brandon Angel just does it himself. The smaller Muhammad on just goes right through him and scores. But the, the late game management has not been good for Arizona State. The horn breakaway gets blocked by Keith. That time they go end the clock and throw a lob. Like lob passes are the absolute last thing you want to be doing to manage closing a game out. Still in a one in one situation. The ninth team foul. There's the numbers on Jackson on the season and today. 13 for Jackson. But at least you got the right guy at the foul line. Doesn't mean he's going to make it, but you'll play the odds of the percentages. Got it. One more coming for Jackson. So back to a two possession game, 52 seconds. Turned into a much better game than anticipated from 20 minutes ago. Exciting finish. He missed the second. Just make Stanford use clock. Can't let him score quickly. Double double now for James Keith. Spencer Jones. Loose ball. Ingram has it in the key. Spencer Jones. Three! One point game! Career high 26 for Spencer Jones and a 14 1 run for the Cardinal. Well, it was content. The other end. All I'm thinking is I need a stop. If Gaffney touches the ball, he's only a 36% foul. Yeah, but you're shoot. only down Would one. Would you shoot Roger? him? No. Wait, would you foul him? No, I'm not fouling. I'm getting a stop here, and I'm winning the game on the other end. I'm not giving Arizona State three points. i got to trust my defense here that I can get a stop, and then I'm winning it on the other side. Ten on the shot clock. Marion Jackson. Here's Jalen Graham. Turn around. This. Stanford's time. got the ball. No timeouts. Harrison Ingram spinning. Ingram stripped, picked up, keep. 